नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते ऑल द कॉइस फॉर अस वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन नमस्ते गोपाल भैया नमस्ते भैया तो भैया टुडे वी हैव शेयरिंग बाय इला दीदी इला दीदी नमस्ते माय केस पास टू यू नमस्ते भैया सो दी आई विल पुट योर ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन एंड देन यू कैन प्लेस योर शेयरिंग सो वी आर ऑल वेरी फैमिलियर विद डॉक्टर इला मनोज तखदिया दीदी शी इज द डायरेक्टर ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट फाउंडेशन एंड शी हैज बीन इन सर्विस फॉर मेनी इयर्स रिटायर फ्रॉम सर्विस नाउ more than uh, 35 to 40 years of experience with lot of research publications and uh, guiding many uh, research students didi has been a very active volunteer of the central region of uhv has been conducting sessions uh, online and offline very many times and has been helping all of us in our journey also in uhv and she has been very instrumental in conducting this uh, recent recently concluded international conference i uh, very uh, consistently participating in the morning sessions also so with this brief introduction i welcome ila didi for her sharing in the morning session didi over to you now thank you namaste sunil bhaiya thank you bhaiya for the introduction namaste gopal bhaiya namaste to all uh, as already introduced i am dr ila manoj tedia my residence is matunga mumbai maharashtra india uh, which is one of the all of us are aware the most vibrant business center of india however my roots are in kutch gujarat and currently i'm sharing from california usa where i am with my daughter younger daughter kushmi and family i'll just proceed further uh, professionally i do continue as a phd guide for research students in the university of mumbai and as mentioned i'm the founder director of anveshnam foundation where we work for education research innovation and publication and this was instituted about a year and a half back i'm also in technical uh, social work as well as education social work so on the trust board of uh, several ngos i retired from college in april 2021 completed 39 and a half years there and shouldering various leadership responsibilities i would like to say that uh, yeah i was i always lived in a joint family right from my parents house as well as my uh, in law family and uh, had a very nice family life always but this introduction of uhv happened in july 2020 and this was when i attended the online fdp during the initial stages of covid and lockdown and that just happened to be 6 months before my retirement and although i didn't know that it is going to help me reach where i am today uh, my journey started with very little exploration but it was it's it was something that helped me although i was there with this kind of content uh, through the jain studies that i was in i used to do study jain philosophy in university of mumbai i used to also take sessions and even otherwise in the family we used to be but there was something that was missing which i didn't know what it was and how it was how to uh, cope up with that but these sessions that i attended the the online fdp gave me a new momentum it uh, helped me to explore within which i thought i had never done so much and therefore i started attending the weekly meetings uh, which were held in the western region on saturday sundays are which are still held that way and i wanted to gain more understanding i did the refresher courses also in hindi english and gradually i started volunteering in fdps in various roles like identifying potential persons in the help desk in the registration moderation faqs and all this that i was doing was with one major objective because i wanted to be very close to the content and at the same time i wanted to participate also so in my own institute during those last 6 months i encouraged my management and staff to join the 5 day fdp i did organize some introductory exploratory sessions in the college of course after college once i retired uh, with lot of guidance from senior mentors i started sharing a few sessions in student sips and within 6 months 
uh, I think it was January 2021, and I started the morning session. Probably that was the second batch. And listening to the mentors live during the morning sessions, then during the regular FDPs as a panelist, listening to recorded videos, it helped me to prepare for the demo presentations during the weekly meetings in the Western region and other preparatory meetings also, which were meant to develop resource persons. So I started getting more and more closer to the content because that was something that was helping me to explore within. So gradually in 2022, June of 2022, I started sharing in FDPs. Now, all this has accelerated my own self-exploration. It strengthened my relationship with so many other co-explorers, mentors. So I have deep gratitude for each one in who have contributed to this journey. I also attended the eight-day visit at the Manviya Siksha Sanskar Samsan uh, Kanpur initially for uh, a non-violent communication workshop. Then I attended some UHV workshops. And that was actually an eye-opener. This was, I began in July 21. So listening to those sessions, experiencing the living over there, I could see that constant explorations of the proposals were happening. And I thought that is the environment, that is the ecosystem that is also required. And participation in face-to-face -face workshop as a co-facilitator, observer, and then gradually as a facilitator also in the offline mode, helped me to get closer to so many others who were sharing. And I was able to uh, see how others were experientially validating these proposals and they are living. Also, these morning sessions where I'm listening to the sharing of others, it is helping me to explore within. So I could see that Earlier, I had no other uh, can say challenges in life. But at the same time, I was also able to see that there were so many moments that I used to be in disharmony within myself. And naturally, when I was in disharmony, I could see that there is nothing, there is no issue, but there's still there are some issues. So I started exploring and I can see that I have come a long way. And of course, I can still see lots has to be done. Coming to my the exercise one, observing self by self, initially I found it very difficult to see, you know, this all this imagination. I It took a long time. I attended many morning um, sessions. But now I can see it. I can see the feelings, thoughts and expectations. So awareness, of course, at every moment by self is not there. But I'm aware of my feelings when I'm paying attention to it. And sometimes it does happen very easily. While I'm interacting, I can see it's happening. Sometimes it gets difficult. And because those moments when I'm able to um, see it, I'm able to experience it, then it definitely turns into responses. So earlier, if there was any, I'll just give an example. Uh, earlier in the department also, or in the family, or in any meeting, if someone gave different views, the very simple it is. Different views than what I had. I would react with a feeling of opposition. But now I'm aware of my thoughts and feelings. I'm able to see the other person's point of view. I'm able to see what could be the reasons for their thoughts. So I do observe my own thoughts and feelings and respond with affection. And I can see that this, um, earlier I used to find it difficult. It used so happen very less. But now I can see that this frequency is also increasing. I'm still working on myself, trying to work on these external distractions, which create those internal disharmony. I'm trying to move towards internal harmony. I'm working on it. And this awareness of the self at many times is what helps me. And I can, I'm also referring to my natural acceptance. And I find it that life is much simpler and lighter. I'm just wanting to give an example here. I realized that I had so much, so much involved in social work, professional work, household, family responsibilities. And I used to ignore my own health. And after having gone through the proposals of self and body, the very important role that the body plays 
I refer to my natural acceptance and I have been able to develop this understanding of the role of body, which is an instrument of the self and how it is very important. So I started focusing, nurturing, caring for my body also and developing a feeling of self-regulation. So there are times when I'm not able to do it for whatever reason, but as far as possible, I, I do work on it. So this way, there are many proposals that I look at whether they're naturally acceptable to me or not. And life has become much more simpler because I get these re responses from within. Also, when I feel comfortable within, I can see that it is a state that I want to continue to be in. I'm not always able to, but there are many times when I'm aware I'm able to. Because when I'm not aware and then I get into the disharmonious moments, I do observe again. I observe my imagination. I try to find out what caused this unhappiness. And I can see that this is not naturally acceptable to me. I try to work out how I can shift this. So whenever I'm uh, interacting, it just happened yesterday evening when I was interacting with my own daughter. Something in our interaction happened such that she did mention uh, just a simple statement she mentioned. I mean, you try to understand. You're not understanding me. You try to at least listen to what I'm saying. Maybe I was going on and on talking something without listening to her. And I could see that she was in discomfort. And immediately I started paying attention to her, listening to her. And with empathy, I was able to, with affection, I was able to interact with her. And I could see that I became more comfortable myself. I could also see that it was me who could decide my feelings at that time. I could see what were my feelings. So when I was interacting initially with her, I could see that I was just within myself, my own thoughts. It was almost like imposing. But when she made that statement and when I listened to it, I started introspecting. I could transform those feelings within her, within me. And mutually there was an exchange that we both became in harmony. So there are times when I'm observing, whenever there is some reaction, and I can see the reaction also coming from someone else, I settle down there and I try to work on my own thoughts. So such reactions have definitely uh, reduced. And whenever I'm very busy, I can see that when too occupied, I can see that such observations are missed. So I am trying to keep time for myself to observe my own feelings. And the morning exercises have helped me to work on this a lot. So although sometimes I feel I can manage both the things together, but I don't think so. So I have realized that I need separate time also to reflect on my own self. So initially all these things used to bother me, but now it is not so. So even if there are reactions, I settle down, I cool down, and I try to work on the right feelings. So there could be feelings of trust and respect. I can feel them. I can observe them. I can verify them. And I can definitely see that I'm responsible for my own feelings. So sometimes I do feel that others are responsible. Like earlier, I could even see when I was interacting with my own husband. And between the two of us, he gets the grocery from outside. And I take the role in the kitchen to prepare. So whenever I'm giving a grocery list and if he's missed something, I feel if I'm working so hard, why can't he remember? Why does he forget? So I used to feel that he's not paying attention to it. He doesn't think it's very important. So whenever there's something missed, I would get angry. And I would say, why can't you refer to the list? I've already sent you in the chat message. You just have to refer to it and purchase it. And he would still be silent. And that would make me more angry. And I would never understand why this was happening every time. So many times he would forget. But now, over a period, it's been a long time. Through these sessions, through these proposals that I've explored, I am able to accept this with a feeling of affection and gratitude for all that he has done for all of us. I'm able to see what he has done 
rather than what he is not. I'm in complete harmony, even if many times very important things have missed out. In fact, now because of my responses, he starts asking me in return that just check if I've forgotten something. Do you need something urgently? Should I go and get it again? So it has made life much more easier. I could also observe how my feelings towards others were dependent on how they behaved with me, how they spoke to me. As I just gave the example that whenever my daughter behaves, you know, when she her behavior is cordial, she's talking with affection, I experience comfort. And I want to be in it. Even I respond well to her. But the moment I see that she is not talking politely, I can see those there are differences. Immediately that feeling of opposition in me, which was always there, when somebody is, there is a difference, that feeling of opposition comes in. I used to express it outside. Gradually my behavior changed. I stopped expressing outside, but it would still be there within. I could see I was not comfortable even then. So I was working on it and I'm still working on it. I work on replacing this feeling of relatedness. I try to understand and evaluate the other person's point of view, the other person's state. Sometimes when I see her, when she's in disharmony, I'm able to see maybe she's tired. Maybe she has a lot of work. Maybe she has work stress. And I immediately settle down internally. I try to evaluate my own self and her. And I definitely now relate with her with affection. So whenever I'm aware, it surely is happening. And I can observe that my feelings, and therefore I'm able to respond to her also in harmony. And we are able to mutually settle down things. But this is not always the case. Many times I slip also. But I surely realize that I myself am making the decisions about my feelings. No one else is deciding. It is because this awareness within me is not continuous. Many times I try, but somehow it gets missed. I realize it later. Whenever I'm aware, I again realize it. But I can decide and see that I want the feeling of relationship. I don't want to have the feeling of opposition. I can also see how it is having an effect on other person's behavior when they are interacting. So in this state, I can see that I have a choice to continue to be the way I was and to be in disharmony within and create disharmony for others or to pause, work on my feelings and have the right feeling within me and thereby bring in harmony within me. I can see that this is my decision. And most of the time when I'm able to see and I'm able to decide, I can see that is a state in which I want to continue because I'm working towards harmony in that situation. It was very easy for me to realize that naturally acceptable thoughts and feelings are the ones in which I want to continue. And the feelings of opposition and contradiction are the ones that I do not want to. Like I have just to give a small example, this is a past example. It's an example of almost 30 years back. I had stopped reading newspapers, watching television serials and, you know, movies because I found that it was bringing too much of negative thoughts in me. And it was all based on some preconditioning and sensation. And I did not want to continue those thoughts and feelings within me. So. I, I could see that these were not naturally acceptable to me. And I was able to reflect that that is the reason why I may have stopped all this. So the right feelings are naturally acceptable to me. So hence this understanding of right feelings I found was very, very important. And I could see that my focus in my life was not in the right direction earlier. Although with all the philosophies that I studied, my focus used to be on physical facility also. I used to work very ambitiously on things which were moving me away from the right feelings and the relationship. 
Although with the rest of nature, I could see I was living harmoniously in a mutually fulfilling way. And I used to have the feeling of prosperity within me at most times. So there were many physical facilities which I was able to live without. So there were many feelings that I could see that were naturally acceptable. And I was able to work on the feelings of relationship with people, which I had really struggled all my life. Because my focus used to be work. And my focus during that time used to be work irrespective of how it is done. Even the example of the recent conference, I can say, there was a lot of work that everyone did. One thing that inspired me from everyone was how people did the work that was required, but with a feeling of relationship. And that is one big takeaway for me from this entire conference. And this was not only during the three-day conference, but even during the preparation. I could see that in most of the people who were involved. And that was a very, very big learning for me. I was able to, it was like a laboratory. It was a practical ground for me to ex experiment all these things and to observe the others. So I am trying to ensure the feelings of relationship and harmony. But as I mentioned, I'm not able to do it always. I'm surely working on it. There are so many NGOs that with, with which I am associated along with my own. And I can say one thing, one takeaway now, even within my own NGO. My focus is more on team building rather than work accomplishment. This is the biggest takeaway that I can say uh, through UHV. And it is because of this that I experience harmony most of the time, even when I'm actively involved with something or the other. I'm constantly working on myself, transforming my feelings to the right feelings. And I can now understand that when I ensure the right feeling for other co-explorers, other colleagues in the organization, in the family, I can see that I'm in harmony. And I can see the impact it has on others. I can see that they are also in harmony with me. I'm enjoying working together. In fact, I long to meet each other to work together. From exercise to observation of the body by self. I can see that I am there, that I'm making decisions for my body, like running, eating, whatever. And that the body just follows these instructions. I can observe that. Even during the recent conference, I have seen that. Whenever we wanted to be awake, whenever we wanted to work, when we wanted to take a nap, self decides. And the body acted according to that. I can observe the two distinct realities and the differences between the self and body, in particular regarding the needs. I can see that the self needs happiness trust, respect, all these feelings and that my body needs the physical things like house, food, so and so, which is temporary. Even when my finger, for example, was just caught on the fire yesterday, just, uh, it was very fractional, but I could sense the burning. So I can feel it, even with closed eyes, I can observe my body. So I am the one who decides what instructions to pass to my body. I can see the exchange of information. I mean, I can experience that ex exchange of information between the two very closely. And can experience the self taking decisions. And that the body is just following its instructions. So at the same time, when I my finger got burnt, I decided to take it under the tap water, cold water. And I was able to uh, pour some water and settle the burning feeling. 
and I decided to withdraw from the tab also. So I'm able to see these instructions and that I'm able to read the instructions. I can see that the activities of the self are continuous imagination, whereas of my body are temporary, like running, walking are temporary and desire, thought, expectations are continuous. And the response, knowing, assuming, recognizing, fulfilling, are the activities, response of the self. And I can see that most of the time, recognizing and fulfilling are based on so many assumptions of mine. Most of the time, which were without knowing. But now, with the proposals and exploring the proposals, I can see that many of the proposals are based on knowing. Just to give a very small example, I can see that um, when I'm interacting, for example, with my colleagues, I can see whether the, the way I'm interacting, whether my assumption is based on knowing, that is with the right feeling, right understanding, right feeling of affection, respect. I can see that my interaction with my colleagues is mutually harmonious. But whenever my assumptions are based on some negative preconditioning about the person, I can feel the opposition and how the interaction is also turning out disharmonious. Also, sometimes my assumptions are based on getting sensations from physical facility. I can see that. For example, the assumption of possessing the latest model of a mobile phone will give me latest features. It will give me, uh, you know, the best functionality. And this assumption will keep changing. So every time my response will keep changing. And I can see that it is not based on knowing, not based on right understanding. The right understanding I can see, I have explored the electronic disposals, how they are adding to the waste in the environment, waste of money, and which I can utilize for more worthwhile things. I can use this technology as long as I, I mean, I can use whatever as long as I, whatever to identify what I really need to do. So evaluating the right things also is very important. I can also see that both are there, self and body. Both are important. I can see the coexistence. I can see the interaction that there is an exchange of information. Also, when I'm looking at my sanskars, I was able to see that I was getting involved too much in voluntary work also. So then I realized that I need to make time to explore all this. So I delegated a lot of work, started preparing another team. And it gave me a lot of time for self-exploration and right understanding, right way of living. I'm able to share these proposals which I'm exploring with others. I have more time for all that. So I tried to also develop self-discipline in different ways rather than you know, surrendering to sensations from outside or I'm trying to identify, trying to work on the interactions and exchanges between self and body. I also decide which sensation I want to attend to, which I do not wish to. I can see that I am the seer, doer, enjoyer. So the dependence of the self on sensation for happiness has been explored, is I'm still exploring. Distance between self and body, I'm not able to see. It's, 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 I'm not able to. I can see that sensations come from the body and also externally from surrounding nature, people. I can see that my deep sanskars are based on assumptions and I need to put a lot of efforts in observing them, working on them. I had assumed that more work accomplishment is important than relationship. I had prioritized work. That was my preconditioning, a deep-rooted sanskar. And I have worked on it and I'm still working on it. 
it's not that I'm not working. I'm working, but I'm working on my relationships and my feelings within me. I can see the priority has shifted. I can see that work is going to give physical facility, which is temporary. It is there. Tomorrow it won't be there. But I can see that relationships, the feelings in the relationship are more important. They will last. And I can see that there is harmony because of that. So I am still self-exploring. I am dialoguing with myself. I am evaluating myself. And I can see that it is not so simple as it earlier seemed to be. I used to earlier find it very difficult to work on these deep rooted sun scars. But gradually, I'm able to work on it very well. At least it has given me a lot of uh, satisfaction, a lot of moments of harmony. And I'm able to replace with the right feeling whenever I'm aware. I never used to accept others correcting me. The moment somebody would correct me, I would focus on their shortcoming and try to correct them. But now it is not so. I trust others' intentions. I try to evaluate what they have, suggestion they've given me. I work on myself. I try to improve on it. Because I can see that I have a lot of competencies to work on. And now I'm filled with gratitude for those who point out, who give me suggestions. Because I can see that they are helping me to see myself better. I do observe these sentences you know, whenever there is a debate in any discussion. And I try to observe how it is affecting our relationship. I also see sometimes some things not to be spoken, but still I speak. And how it can add to the situation unnecessarily. I also try to understand what meanings I'm giving to situations or things. Whatever I'm receiving from others, whatever I can see in others' behavior or from any things in the environment. I'm able to see how different meanings I'm giving. So I'm able to see the deep-rooted sanskars, some of them. I'm still trying to explore. It's very difficult because you really need to focus and find out what are my sanskars which I really need to work on. And I can see that it is my decision to observe them, to see what meanings I have given to them, whether I'm doubting the intention of the others when they're giving me feedback or suggestion, and I give some meaning to it from my perspective. I can see that. And slowly I try to work on it objectively. And I evaluate myself. So I can see that the more internal I go, the more I explore within, it is helping me. I can see that it is honest feedback. And when I see it as an honest feedback, I'm ready to work on myself for my own betterment. But if I go back to my old sanskar, again, I go through the same. So it is a swing for me. I'm still working on it. Observing my being in space, in coexistence, I'm not able to see that much more. I can see the coexistence with others, all the other units, nature, people, all the other units. I'm still working on it. But there are many times that I've been able to see this coexistence, I've been able to experience this coexistence. And I can see that I need to undergo these exercises one and two again and again, every moment. Then only I'll be able to practice it, to understand it and practice it in my living com continuously. I'm able to see from the perspective of self, that is purpose, program and potential, how we are all similar. I'm able to see that we all differ in our competencies. And as I'm interacting with more and more people within family, friends, outside, I'm able to see my level of competence, my work, still requires a lot of improvement, a lot of work. 
And I can see that it has been four years since I'm with these proposals. I can see this shift, which is slow and gradual. Similarly, I can also see that others are also who are working on their competencies will need time. It is a slow process. So in all my interactions, I'm trying to observe. Uh, I try to observe the interactions that the other's behavior and words are leading to some sensation in my body. And it is me who's choosing to read the sensation. It is me who's tasting this sensation and attaching meaning to it. And this is all on the basis of my assumptions, my sanskars. Sometimes I'm able to keep away from others' influences. That is when I choose to be happy within. So I can see that I'm happy when I'm responding. And I'm unhappy when I'm reacting without being aware. And I can see that I give instructions to the body to express outside. The body is following the instructions. I realize that I'm trying to pay attention to some sensations over others, trying to see the meanings that I associate with them. I'm trying to notice the sanskars that are really influencing my own feelings and leading to either responses or reactions within me. I'm also observing when I decide to instruct my body to express the reactions or not to express. So just as an example also, when I was in Kutch a few months back, just a cow was passing next to me and it swirled her, she just swirled her body very close to me and I reacted shouting so loudly, almost running away. But the next moment I could see that she was busy driving the flies away from her body. She was not there to harm me. I settled down very soon with a feeling of affection towards her. So I'm trying to be aware of mice and scars and working towards response, trying to do away with reactions which I am still doing so many times. So I try to observe my recognizing and tasting of these sensations through the body. I can see that at the time, I'm, sometimes I'm reading these sensation often and associating meaning. And my feelings are of opposition, which I may not be aware. Sometimes my feelings are based on the right understanding, but most times, many times based on assumptions which lack the right understanding. And I do not feel happy at such times. But definitely what I used to react earlier have turned into responses many times. I'm trying to observe my expressions, the way I speak, uh, my actions, gestures, expressions on my face, trying to observe it myself. And I'm definitely unhappy when I'm expressing negative feelings, uh, negative words, and I'm happy within when I'm expressing it positively with the right feeling. I'm working on myself and I'm committed to work on myself. I'm trying to devote as many hours as I can. Sometimes could be four, sometimes could be two, and sometimes could be 12. But sharing the content, being in touch with the content, listening to the content is really helping me to explore. So although I know there are moments when I'm not doing it rightly, I'm sliding back. But it is helping me to rise again. All the volunteering that I'm into is helping me in my self-journey to develop my right understanding. I cannot thank enough the opportunities that I've been given for volunteering. I have learned many skills, video editing, preparing online content, uh, translations, uh, English, Hindi to Gujarati, uh, sharing content in SIPs, face-to-face -face workshops, motivating and mentoring others for sharing, participating in weekly meetings, morning meetings, 
collaborating with others for most of the activities, including the conference that we had. I do not, I don't no longer see all social work also as a social work. I see it as a responsibility towards all. I can see that is my role, that is my value in participating in the larger order. And that too is all resulting in my self-development. I'm not doing anything for others. Whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to help myself. I'm trying to coexist with all the other units. Whether I'm playing the role of the, uh, whichever role in the volunteering, I do not know what is the right term to use even in place of volunteering. I can see my role in the larger order and how harmony in myself is dependent on what role I'm playing within for myself, my family, society, and nature. So I am committed to help my own self. And with this, I would like to thank each one of you. Yeah, thank you, Iladidi, for this elaborated, simplified, sincere, and inspirational sharing. Thank you so much. So you have been contributing so much to yourself and contributing so much to the team and the whole Yeshu family, helping our own uh, self-exploration and societal transformation. Nice day. Thank you so much. So with this uh, limited time, I first of all request Gobal Paya to give his comments regarding this sharing. Gobal Paya, over to you. Namaste, Didi. Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste. So we all know that Didi has contributed dedicatedly in this UHP programs. And the dedication she has shown for this conference is much appreciable. And I was also surprised to see her day and night. Whenever there is a meeting, Didi is available with his full ability. So that kind of dedication we can see all of us. And regarding uh, sharing, so the important part that I can sense in this sharing is self-evaluation. So important is that Didi is now becoming aware of her sanskar and she is evaluating it. So accepting the sanskar and start evaluation is very important in this process. And I am happy to see that in whole sharing Didi is talking with evaluation of her sanskar. So that is nice part of Didi's sharing. And if we see naturally, we all want our acceptance in others. This naturally we want. Right. So it is natural desire that everyone should accept me. Everyone should, should accept me as it is. So if my sanskar are not aligned with this feeling of relationship, then we start dominating others to accept me. But this expansion, this acceptance in everyone can happen naturally with feeling of relationship. So as my sanskar aligned with the feeling of relationship, other will accept me naturally. And when people accept us naturally, it ensures mutual fulfillment and justice. So this mutual fulfillment can ensure in a, with a natural process, with natural feeling. And this is much easier process than by dominating, by opposing. So what we need to do, we need to simply work on our sanskar, we need to simply move towards our natural acceptance 
and our acceptance will be in others in a natural manner and this is what we all want so this is our natural desire to be accepted by each one of us and it can happen with feeling of love and this feeling of love can be actualized with realization of truth so as we move towards truth it leads to love and finally compassion and with this we become available to each one in terms of feeling so generally people want to ensure their acceptance by domination by opposition but in this whole process exercise 1 and exercise 2 commonly we can see this acceptance can be ensured naturally what we need to do we need not to work on others we need to work on ourselves we need to ensure feeling of relationship in ourselves and with this feeling of relationship i start accepting others as it is so with feeling of relationship i can see that other has potential naturally other also wants to live with happiness the only issue is the sanskar and with this feeling of relationship i can complement with everyone sanskar so in this manner our natural desire that is our acceptance in everyone can happen in a natural manner and that is what we all are working through this exercise 1 and 2 so nice didi the important is you are accepting your sanskar and you are making efforts to evaluate it so this self evaluation process is very important in this journey and didi is trying to do it very well and rest is the process it may take time but important is acceptance of our sanskar and courage to self evaluate and ready to accept guidance from others these three things can make our journey towards this self exploration towards this state of pure observer so nice didi that you are making effort by yourself and your sharing is inspiration to all of us in the sense that we should evaluate our sanskar we should accept others guidance and move towards our self transformation so if we are doing our transformation building team will be a natural outcome so our trust respect affection can be based of a team and it will start from myself so if i have a feeling of trust in everyone for everyone if i have a feeling of respect affection then people will start associating me unconditionally and this team will be built up and this thing can happen naturally so that's all from my side it's time for hindi session thank you dilip nice to hear you thank you, you thank, thank you every thank you thank you gobal bhaiya for those comments those comments also are helping each and every one of us for sure as we can see thank you ladidi for this exemplified sharing thank you uh, all the co-explorers 